basically what happened, um, to make a long story real short, he visited a young lady, um, went over to her place. Um, she was there, he was there. At one point, she opened up a door. Do you feel like it was a setup because cats came like after you, like they was coming to get you? Yeah, I think it was a setup. Should be celebrating the release of his album and the success of his single, Icy. He's had to defend his life last week and now he has to defend his freedom. May 10th, 2015, Pookie Loke became collateral damage between one of the most prolific hip-hop beefs in the 2000s between Atlanta legend Radrick Davis, a.k.a. Gucci Mane, and J. Wayne Jenkins, a.k.a. Young Jeezy. Henry Lee Carter III was known to his peers in law enforcement as the rapper Pookie Loke. 27 years old at the time, his life upon this earth had a couple of hours left before it would fade away forever. That day, the wheels began turning upon what would become one of the most historic moments in hip hop. Gucci Mane was at a friend's apartment in Decatur, Georgia, but little did he know, Boogie Loke, along with four other affiliates, were lurking, waiting for their moment to strike. That evening, it is alleged Pookie Loke's intention was to retrieve Gucci Mane's chain at the request of Young Jeezy. Due to the falling out that was brewing between Gucci Mane and Young Jeezy, it resulted in songs being created as diss records, one of which was Jeezy's track titled, Stay Strapped. Within the lyrics, Jeezy is heard putting a price up as a bounty for anyone that could bring Gucci Mane's chain to him. The bounty was $10,000. With the alleged 10,000 up for grabs, Pookie Loke was rumored to have put together what he thought was a sure-proof plan to pull off the heist and possible homicide of Gucci Mane. He would place a trap for the so icy rapper, setting him up to believe he was going to be with a female that had his best interest at heart. She would be just the pawn to achieve putting him in the right place at the right time. That plan would fail horribly within the hours that it was put into play. Keeping tabs on Gucci Mane's whereabouts, Pookie Loke was of the impression things were on track but the moment arrived and everything went south. According to police reports and Gucci Mane's lawyer, Dennis Sheeb, an eyewitness recounted the events that occurred. While at the female's apartment in Decatur, Georgia, five men, three of which were dressed in all black, stormed in the apartment surrounding Gucci and his companion. They were able to enter when the female companion conveniently opened up the door. One of them had green tape, um, one of them had a weapon, one of them had brass knuckles, and hit him with brass knuckles. Uh, then hit him real hard, had him wrapped up. Another guy had a weapon, hit one of the other guys with uh, a weapon. Gucci would be punched with the brass knuckles while his female companion would receive a blow with the back of the firearm. At this point, Pookie Loke and his affiliate's plan seemed to be going well, but in a split second, the tables turned. They underestimated the human nature to want to survive. And in the moment when one of the assailants allegedly shouted, shoot him, or something to that extent, Gucci Mane decided to protect his life. It became a situation where he defended himself. Uh, somebody yelled, one of the other five guys yelled, shoot him, something to that effect. He grabbed a gun that was nearby and he started the open fire to defend himself. Talking to reporters, Sheeb said witnesses heard a scuffle and gunshots and saw the men fleeing the apartment, with one asking another, are you hit? Further, the witness claimed the assailant, which was shot, walked their way and ran into the woods, while the others ran in the opposite direction and left in the truck. Gucci's lawyer, Sheeb, made it aware that Gucci would also get into his vehicle and went the opposite way of the man who was shot. The landlord of the apartment stated that from his perspective, it looked like a robbery. However, Gucci Mane's lawyer felt differently. Opening up about his conclusion to the situation, being a setup, and the female was a part of it. Uh, from what I, I talked to the detective, um, the detective indicated he was set up. We have an independent witness I tried to give to the detective. The detective basically doesn't want a whole lot more information. We have a witness um, out there, a man that saw the five men go in. We have a woman that this young lady who he was with said, basically, she set him up. 
Do you feel like it was a setup because cats came like after you? Like they was coming to get you? Yeah, I think it was a setup. Do you have any like you know indications on who it might be? Have you heard anything on the streets? Just whether you feeling your own heart? Well, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, I ain't too many people got the motive to do some shit like that. I just like a detective, learn, you know what I'm saying? Look at the motive, who has motive to do it. And this is the only thing that has motive. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. That allegation would come full circle when Pookie Loke's final moments came to an end. The truth would come out that the person who was shot and went into the woods was no other than Henry Lee Clark III, AKA Pookie Loke. In those moments, the clock was ticking. He was hit and bleeding and in the woods away from getting assistance. In the frenzy of the shootout and possible shock throwing off his sense of direction, he just ran and tried to get away. Pookie Loke would fight for his life, but eventually the clock counted down and minutes turned to seconds. Then his remaining seconds ran out. Three days later, Pookie Loke would be found lifeless at a local middle school. Once the person was determined to be Henry Lee Clark III, AKA Pookie Loke, Gucci and his lawyer's assumptions began to come together. It was discovered that Pookie Loke was an artist affiliated to Young Jeezy's CTE label at the time. He was a member of the rap collective Lokish Lifestyle with two others, Carlos Lowdown Rhodes and Shannon Lundry, also known as Luke Ruga and Two Gun Young. In a rare recovered footage, Pookie Loke can be seen in the white tee performing with his group, Lokish Lifestyle, back in the day. Pookie Loke was trying to build a successful music career, but that all came to an end and Gucci Mane was apprehended for his murder and was now having to fight for his life once again, first physically and now legally. At the end of 2005 into the beginning of 2006, Gucci Mane was successful in his case after the charges were dropped due to insufficient evidence along with eyewitness accounts corroborating his claim of self-defense. With what appeared to be the confirmation of Pookie Loke's affiliation to Young Jeezy, Gucci Mane made it his mission to taunt his rival, releasing the diss track Benchwarmers and Truth, where he mocked Pookie Loke's passing after the 10K bounty was placed on his head. Pookie Loke was gone, but his passing sent the feud between Gucci and Jeezy into overdrive, resulting in a slew of public insults in their interviews. I mean, you know, we ain't never had no relationship, man. Dude was a fuck boy, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I really don't like to be compared to that nigga, man, because, like, I'm like a VHS homie. You can rewind me back. Everybody in the city know me, dog. Like, this nigga, you know, basically I did another nigga a favor, dog. You know, and the nigga is a fucking net at a barbecue, dog. The nigga, he trying to get some shine, man. He can't get no shine on I me. Mean, I'm a boss, dog. He's, he's an artist. You know what I'm saying? What's going on with you and Jesus? I don't f with a nigga here, Right. So, so what's got you feeling that way, man? Niggas just be doing a little You know what I'm saying? Shit a do, you know what I mean? Young Jeezy, in an attempt to clear his name from the connection to the incident that took Pookie Loke's life, directed some of the words of his song, Forgive Me, to the fallen Lokish lifestyle member. Rest in peace to Pookie Loke, blame it on me, never snitch. Lord knows I ain't sitting the homie on no dummy mission. He further reiterated his innocence in a 2015 Genius interview where he stated, I never spoke on it. And over the years, it's something that bothered me because I felt I was never able to explain the situation because that's against the G code. I just wanted to put that in the air like, Lord knows I would never send homie on no dummy mission. I got too much love. It seems that Pookie Loke would never be able to rest in peace as his name continued to be tossed at the center of the feud that allegedly led to him losing his life. But in November 2020, in the pandemic-inspired versus battle by Swiss Beats and Timberland, Gucci Mane and Young Jeezy met on stage for their versus battle. After things looked a little shaky after Gucci performed his diss, Truth, Jeezy kept his cool, and the two buried the hatchet, putting their decades beef to rest. I know it's hard for you to sleep knowing when you kill your homeboy. You left his son to be a bastard, won't even raise your homeboy. No disrespect, it's all love. Love, my That's nigga, let's get it. Hey, town, this is what it is, baby. Yeah. 20 yeah. years, nigga. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, it's like we grown men, dog. Like, we both rich. Like, we both good. It's just like, either we gonna be, you know, 
going back and forth with this and we're going to be in the penitentiary or we're going to figure it out. The end to their personal issues was made official when Gucci Mane brought Young Jeezy out on tour later on. The sad reality of the lifestyle Pookie Lok led came afterwards. Because even though Young Jeezy and Gucci Mane settled their differences, Pookie Lok's son was left to deal with the trauma and scars and wasn't able to just let it go like they did. I almost stood up that day, man. Tell them folks to stop capping on making. Listen, man, this man had the whole FBI. He had every police officer in making with him. Just the same way he did after the verse about it. And they got the video, man. Listen, stop capping. That man ain't the gangster. Y'all think he is, man. That man got security everywhere. In releasing a video making his feelings heard, he in turn brought on animosity by another rapper named Big 30, who fired back at Pookie Loke's son with the response for mentioning his name. Pookie Loke's son was on the path that played a role in the loss of his father's life. The gang culture is like a loop that just never stops turning. Pookie Loke suffered in his last moments. Instead of steering away from that lifestyle, his son is now proclaiming the same actions and behavior against the same people surrounding his murder. It's a sad reality, but one so many face. As it stands, Pookie Loke's legacy was memorialized in the book. Street Gang Story, OG rated, Loyalty is the Difo, written by an author with the name Mr. Big Man. According to him, the rappers surrounding his death are only projecting a lifestyle that Pookie Loke actually lived for their own financial gain. Mr. Big Man's intention in writing the book was to tell the truth and lift Pookie Loke up as the true gangster that he was. Whether that's something to glorify or not, it stands that another life was lost and left a son without a father. When will it ever end? Rest in peace to Henry Lee Clark III, a.k.a. Pookie Loke.